Pirates to town. The Panthers are looking for their second conference win. The Pirates are trying to avoid opening 0-3. Big East basketball is next. We're on the campus of the University of Pittsburgh this afternoon, getting set for a Big East matchup between number 18 Pitt and the Pirates of Seton Hall, and we welcome all of you inside the Peterson Center this afternoon, along with Mike Jarvis. I'm John Sanders, and so far, so good in the absence of their leading point guard, Levance Fields, well, for Pittsburgh. Well, when you know how to win, and you do it with defense and rebounding, and you just keep fitting the pieces into the pot, then you know what? You keep on winning, and I think that's what Pitt's doing. Let's take a look at our star watch for this afternoon. You look at Lang, one of the leading scorers in the Big East, and Young for Pitt. Well, I think this is the matchup of the game. They're gonna go head-to-head -head against one another. Both guys lead their team in scoring and rebounding. They both know how to win. They're great competitors. It should be a great matchup and will probably determine the outcome today. And the guy that's taken over in the starting lineup since LeVance Fields went down is another guy to keep an eye on. His name is Keith Benjamin. He has been dynamite in his last three starts. We've got the starters for both sides. Big East basketball is coming up. Sector Spider. Visit us on the web at sectorspdrs.com or call 1 800 the Amex now. We know you like style. We know you like performance. We thought you'd like fuel economy and a great warranty as well. With the Pontiac G6 Sedan, you get 30 EPA estimated highway miles per gallon and more horsepower than Camry and a 100,000 mile five year powertrain limited warranty. New Pioneer, designed for action. Today's Big East game is brought to you by Oppenheimer Funds, the right way to invest. Red Lobster, for a short time, pair your two favorite shrimp creations together at Red Lobster. And by PNC, leading the way. The zoo is all set for basketball this afternoon, and so are we. Glad you could join us. Let's take a look at the starting lineups for these two teams. First of all, at Seton Hall, Harvey, Nutter, Hazel, Lang, and Garcia. The biggest guy there is Garcia at 6'9". Nobody else is over 6'5", so they're not real big. There's Ronald Ramon taking over at the point. Keith Benjamin also in the starting lineup, along with Gilbert Brown. Those are the two new faces that have come in since Cook and Fields went down. Sam Young and Dewan Blair round out that starting five. Now let's take a look at the, some of Coach Mike's musings here. Some keys to victory for these two teams this afternoon. Well, I think, first of all, with uh, Seton Hall, they've got to get some easy baskets. Uh, they've got to take away uh, Peach, uh, Pittsburgh's rhythm, and they'll do that by changing some zones uh, into some zone defense, uh, take away the middle. Uh, that also will be accomplished by the zone, and uh, obviously control the tempo. Pittsburgh, on the other hand, wants to grind it out. Dominate inside, create mismatches, control the boards, and play that smash mouth basketball that Pittsburgh is famous for. Head coach Jamie Dixon, 42 years old, 118 wins, 32 losses, unbelievable winning percentage. He was an assistant here under Ben Howland. And it's Bobby Gonzalez, who was also a former assistant coach in the Big East Conference of Providence. Bobby is 43, and congratulations. Just had his first child in late November, did Bobby and his wife. So a very energetic, very active. Keep an eye on him. He'll be all over the place. Well, he will. And you know what? He's really learned how to control that. He's only got one technical this year. So uh, he's learned, he's toning it down quite a bit, but he can coach. Jim Burr is the referee. We're working alongside Curtis Shaw and Will Bush, a veteran Big East crew. And we are underway. The Pirates control the opening tip. Here's Lang. First move down the lane. Comes to a jump stop. Turns, shoots, comes up short. And Blair has the rebound for Pitt. Well, right away, though, you saw what, what uh, Seton Hall's going to try to do. They're going to try to get Lang involved and try to basically get Young in trouble if they can. Now, Lang and Nutter both fouled out of the Marquette loss. A very tough loss on the road. Blair gets it underneath, finds Benjamin. 
Setting for three is Ramon, rimming out. No fault of Benjamin, made that extra pass, and of course that's what makes Pittsburgh so dangerous on offense, the extra pass, the unselfishness that they're willing to show. And Gilbert Brown got back in time defensively to cut off that fast break. It'll still be the Pirates' ball, no scoring in the first 45 seconds. Garcia on the outside, that one is deflected out of bounds. Well, once again, in that right out, run out, John, uh, you got, Seton Hall's going to try to get as many easy baskets as they, as they can, either off the defense or basically just pushing up after a score. They figure that's the best chance they got of beating this Pittsburgh team. Well, they did beat Pittsburgh in this building two years ago. And no team, Big East or non-conference, has ever won twice here. The Panthers simply don't lose in the Peterson Event Center. Well, they don't. Their, their fans are great, and they also, what they do is they bring defense to the table every night. Young for three. Drills it. He's 47% three-point shooter. Well, he's playing so relaxed, and uh, that three-point shot now, you know, really looks easy, and, of course, that sets up his driving game as well. Hazel for three. Blair, the rebound for the Panthers, an early 3-0 start for Pitt. Ben Vint pulls up but does not shoot, instead goes to Ronald Ramon. Now a year ago, if Keith had come in and had that same shot, he probably would have taken it because he would try to get as many shots as he could knowing he wasn't going to get that many minutes. So as it turns out, in the last three games, he's playing more minutes than anybody else. Young works the baseline, lays it up, missed the shot, to follow by Blair. <laughs> The more you see the big fella play, the more you want to put him among the top freshmen in the country. His seven-foot wingspan with that great body and quick feet and hands go a long way. Another short with his three. Brown has the rebound. Panthers will try to run. Ramon dances down the lane, bending, bending good. Got the basket to go. It will count. Well, you know, rebounding, especially on the offensive boards, is about an attitude. Attitude that says, I'm going to get to the weak side, I'm going to get that ball, and if he can jump the way he can, put it down. And the basket was not counted. Benjamin at the baseline, covered up quickly by Nutter. They look inside the Blair, but go instead to Ronald Ramon. Well, the last thing that Seton Hall want, wanted to do was, was to get behind, because that will basically allow Pitt to do what they're doing right now, and that is just grind it out on you. Young gets inside, lays it off the front iron and down. He's got five early points. It's a 7-0 Panther start. Pirates have missed all three of their shots. They've got to make shots if you want to win here at Pittsburgh. Harvey gets some separation from Young, then scoops. Tip won't go. And Juan Blair picks off the rebound. He's averaging almost 10 rebounds a game, and a bad pass that time by Benjamin. Harvey races to the other end and is fouled. Ronald Ramon will pick up his first foul. I'm looking at Jamie over in the bench and his head's down and he's scratching his eyes and he's saying, why did you turn that one over, Keith? Uh, once again, you got that 7-0 going, you got the ball, you want to make sure that every pass is completed. Harvey gets the roll on number one. He is a 72% foul shooter, a sophomore from Brooklyn. They went out and added some size. They've got Mike Davis, who's 6'11", Augustin Okasun, who is 6'10", and Brandon Waters, who is 6'9", but they're not playing as many minutes as Garcia right I, now. I was just going to say, that size looks really good in the airport, but uh, if they're not on the court, it really doesn't do you much good. Missed by Benjamin. And quickly back the other way. Lang carries it. Juan Blair already for the Panthers with four rebounds in the early going. And you know, he plays with such a relaxed atmosphere, smile on his face. So he's fun to watch. Well, he really is, and he's a pleasant surprise. I don't think Pittsburgh really knew how good he was going to be right away. They knew he was going to be good, but, you know, once again, he comes with such a great work ethic, and uh, he's got great feet and great hands for a big guy. I bet he's good on the dance floor, too. Well, he grew up in the shadows of the Peterson Event Center. Went to Shenley High School, led his team to an undefeated state championship. Young skips it to Brown. He'll try three, fending off Blair on the weak side with rebound number five. The putback won't go. And back the other way comes Larry Davis just into the lineup. Well, Seton Hall is going to have to get a body on Blair on every single shot 
if they want to have a chance of winning this basketball game. You can't let him get offensive rebounds. And you got to go at him at the other end of the basket and try to get him in foul trouble. That shot is off the front of the iron and then lost out of bounds by Lang. So Blair with five rebounds and the Pirates now have missed their first seven shots in the opening four minutes of the game. Yeah you got to make shots especially when you're on the road and of course it's tough they got in late last night didn't have a chance to really have a lot of time to get used to the facility and to the rooms. Great save by Ramon and Blair. Blair gets You know hands I think are the most important thing and then I think feet are next and if you've got both you got a chance to be in a great player. He can catch it and he can move. Larry Davis outside. And you know what I love about his feet, John, is not just on the offensive end, on the defensive end, he'll get around and get his hands on a lot of basketballs because of his quick feet. Well, Jamie claimed it was off the leg of the Seton Hall player. The official thought otherwise, so we will head to our first timeout. It comes with 15-25 to play in the opening half. The Panthers have sprinted out to a seven-point lead. Hero at move and nice basket by the freshman Dewan Blair. We'll be back with more Big East basketball. Nine to two pit has the lead early on here at the Peterson Event Center. Let's take you back a little less than a year ago. It was in February 19th. The game was played without Aaron Gray was on the bench with a sprained ankle for the Panthers, so he did not play in the Meadowlands. And the Pirates made a run. Cut in Pitt's lead to six in the final minutes, but that's when number two is not playing right now for Pitt. Stepped up, Levance Field, 15 points in the second half, seven in the final two and a half minutes. Jamie Dixon gets his 100th career victory. And he got there in a hurry, didn't he? Wow, I tell you what, one of the fastest all time to get there. You know, four, four years, he's got 100 wins. There aren't many coaches. Harvey outside the line, he's been quiet. Six different players have taken shots. Lang was his second shot, and he hits a tray. Well, they need that, and of course, Lang is uh, a 29 percent three, uh, three point shooter, and uh, he's going to have to improve that percentage today. Panthers scored the first seven in the ball game, and that's the first field goal scored by the Pirates of Seton Hall. Well, and Seaman to the baseline. Ahead. I'm sorry, Seton Hall, as you can see right now, they went to the zone, and they'll have to do a lot of that this afternoon and basically change their defenses, try to get Pittsburgh out of their rhythm because Pittsburgh is a rhythm team, and they do a great job at taking advantage of mismatches and getting people inside. It's the second foul on Eugene Harvey, who was one of the Cousy Award candidates at the start of the season. So it was Levance Fields, but Levance is out for a few more weeks. Young to the line, 75% from the stripe and off to a good start he's got six early points well he's trying to make us look good we did have him in the star watch of course he's going to have to play a great game to to probably out, outshine his teammate uh, duan blair and it's important too for the panthers to keep blair out of foul trouble and keep him in the game well usually john blair's the one that puts himself in foul trouble he'll pick up a foul sometime you know in in, in the backcourt so he's got to uh, continue to eliminate those foolish fouls. And of course Pittsburgh with their man to man defense is solid principles plenty of help. They like to switch on the perimeter and really just just do a great solid job on defense. Nothing fancy nothing complicated. Nutter has been quiet shot clocks inside 10 Benjamin who's turned it over a couple of times pulls up for a three and misses everything and a bad shot because there's nobody there to rebound. That's the shots that he used to take. From the corner, Lang a miss. Nutter keeps it alive, though, for the Pirates. Davis spins inside, misses the shot, and rebound to Blair. Lead to Young off the glass, and good. Nice pass by Ronald Ramon, and Sam Young with nine. Nice pass, even a better catch. <laughs> Well, Sam is very athletic, very good at gymnastics. And the Bobby Gonzalez will take the 30 second timeout and try to cool off for the hot start that the Panthers have had. And watch Ramon, good point guard here, good. eyes up. Right, good pass. And then, of course, at the other end, a great catch using that gymnastic ability, catching it and laying it in all in one stride. Well, nine of the 13 points for the Panthers belong to Young. Six of Pitt's eight rebounds belong to Blair. You know, and you wonder, you say, well, how can Pitt continue to win 
when with such devastating injuries. Well, all you have to look do is look and you see a number 23 in Sam Young. You see Dewan Blair and you say, now I know why they're continuing to win. Well, they've made some changes now, bringing on the freshman. Brad Wanamaker is in the lineup. Biggs is also out there, and he's played well, getting more minutes. And that's the one thing that does change when you lose two guys. Actually, they lost three altogether. The other player wasn't playing much, but you lose a lot of your depth. You don't have as much depth. You do, and, and the good thing is, though, you can replace them with guys like Biggs and guys uh, like Benjamin, uh, veterans who know how to play, and most importantly, know how to win. That won't go. And somebody was hanging on to Garcia as he went for the rebound. Looks like Tyrell, I think. Tyrell Biggs will pick up his first foul. I, Tyrell Biggs, uh, you talk about another big guy with really, really quick feet. And he can, he can defend on the wing. Uh, he'll get down on you and play defense. So he's a very, very valuable and versatile player for Pitt. Garcia bumps his way inside, puts it up, comes up short. Loose ball, scramble for it. Ramon in a crowd of three, and they get the held ball. And Jamie Dixon wanted a foul, not a held ball in that situation, but Ramon couldn't get out of it, and the possession arrow will keep it in Pitt's hands. Well, if I was the coach, I'd want a foul too, but uh, the only thing is uh, Ramon did a nice job that time. He didn't make a pass underneath his own basket. You know why? Because he knew that on a jump ball, Pitt still had possession. Smart play. So the Panthers with 15 on the shot clock will go to work in half court. Gilbert Brown inside Young off the glass that one bends out gets his own rebound and will go to the line. The foul is going to be on John Garcia the sophomore from Bayshore New York will pick up his first. And he'll head to the bench. Augustine Okasun checks into the lineup. A transfer from Harkham College. So he's a junior from Nigeria. He was hanging on to Brown. And he will pick up the foul. Hazel had him locked up with one arm, but it was right in front of Curtis Shaw. <laughs> That's a bad place to be holding somebody in front of the ref. And that far away from the basket, too. Yeah, it makes no sense. Young working against Lang. Farrell's inside, bending off. Rebound by Big, but he can't score either. Seton Hall's going to have to do a better job on those boards blocking out. Nutter on a drive, and he is fouled. That one goes on Brad Wanamaker, his first. Third team foul on the Panthers here in the opening seven and a half minutes. Well, once again, you, you watch this drive. I I don't know. <laughs> but you should get a good whistle today. You got three veteran officials and uh, Seton Hall if anything has been a victim of some you know some maybe not such good calls on the road and and even one of their losses at home against Connecticut. Well it was a problem for them at the end of the Marquette game. They led that game almost the entire night and then finally lost it in the last few minutes. Well on the road not only do you have you got to take care of the ball you got to make free throws. They didn't do a real good job shooting free throws they weren't their usual self on the free throw line that didn't help either and unfortunately as Wanamaker lost it to scramble for it bending high and in for Larry Davis his first basket well here's a point in the game John where you, you're looking for Seton Hall to basically press a little bit try to take advantage of the fact that maybe uh, uh, Pitt might be a little bit suspect at the, at the guard position especially with uh, Benjamin out the game. Off to a good start this afternoon. They go inside to Young. Little head fake and back to the free throw line for Sam. Larry Davis will pick up the foul and we'll head to a break with 11.39 to play in the opening half. Panthers have led by as many as eight. 13 to nine is their edge right now. The orange and blue are back at the garden for a visit from the Motor City. Catch Jamal Crawford in the College basketball snaps into focus on FSN New York. Binghamton looks to make some. To nine as our score. Panthers have led throughout. All season long champion apparel will be bringing you a new feature highlighting the tradition and history 
of the Big East Conference. And today you're looking at some of the tradition of the Oakland Zoo as they wait outside in the lobby. Then they have special cheers that they give them. And of course, they all wear the Oakland Zoo t shirts, which I understand you don't have yet. I don't. I'm, where, I'm wondering where it is. Do you have one? They are very active and a big factor in why the Panthers rarely lose in this building. Champion, how you play. I want my t shirt. Maybe they remember your from the days of St. John's and they don't want to give you a t shirt. <laughs> well, I'll tell you what, the last couple of games we had, they, they, they should give me two t shirts. <laughs> 14 to 9, Panthers lead. Nutter will walk it up. Lang has five points so far to lead the scoring for Seton Hall. That's Larry Davis outside. Nutter gets free for a shot and buries it. Got away from Brown that time. First basket for Nutter. He's got a great knack for just knowing when, you know, how to move a defender and then obviously taking that off balance shot. Benjamin to the baseline and backs it out. Well, the last time Benjamin was in, he took that ill-advised shot, got him to the bench. I don't think you'll see him taking too many shots without uh, somebody in position to rebound from here on in. And he's been averaging 34 minutes a game since Levant's fields went down. And Seton Hall this time goes back to a little zone. Looks like they're playing a little 1-2-2. Two, two. Inside 10 on the shot clock. Young with a quick jumper that's too strong and the rebound on the weak side. Brought out of there by Hazel. Lead is down to three. Garcia down low, off the glass, bending off and a rebound to Pitt. Well, you know, it's one thing to get it inside. You got to finish, though. So, you know, right now, Seton Hall can get it in, but they've got to finish. That will go on number one, Keith Benjamin, an offensive foul. He did a little hesitation move and decided to head down the lane and got caught. Well, he did, and uh, this time, Jamie leaves him in. Uh, the last thing you want for Keith now to do is start looking over his shoulder. So, smart move by Coach Dixon by not substituting for You can see the zoo right behind us. <laughs> bouncing as always. They take great pride in, in the job that they do. Uh, they really think they're the sixth man. Another for three. Rebound snagged by Blair. Another rebound for Blair. That's seven already this afternoon. Benjamin looks to Biggs. Instead they reverse it. Now Blair. Draws three. Somebody's got to be open, but looking for somebody to pass to. Fourth turnover by the Panthers. One other thing, John, and uh, folks at home, it's a very subtle thing, but you know, Seton Hall, they'll play you man to man, they'll play your zone, and then they might go with one of the junk defenses, and they might go box and one against different guys. And once again, the whole attempt is to keep you totally out of your rhythm. Hazel gets it to Lang. Game late. Lang from the side, bending, bending off, and a rebound. Garcia put back is good. He's been getting the rebounds, and he's once again. And a lucky pass right there. It looked like it was intended for Ramon. It's tapped out of bounds, and the Panthers will keep it. With 9.13 to play in the half, there's Bobby Gonzalez. He had some great success at Manhattan. Yes, he did. He's an excellent coach. Uh, he really, you know, teaches the game. He's got great enthusiasm. The kids really enjoy playing for him. Right now, he's got his team on an 8-1 run. It's gotten him right back in the ball game at 14 to 13. You see him working over there, John. He's working it. He's getting these guys. Uh, the one thing about about Gunzi is he believes that he can win every game and just like he did it uh, when he was in Manhattan they went against the big boys and many times beat them. Well, the Panthers haven't scored in four and a half minutes and Seton Hall has been doing the damage and the last nine it's been win one lose one win one lose one. They haven't been able to string together two wins in a row and as I mentioned right at the top they're trying to avoid an 0 and 3 start in conference play but. The key is, and I think it's going to be tougher than ever this year, is to win on the road. It is, and uh, there's so many reasons for that, and many times it's about, you know, just not having maybe the, the vet, enough veteran players. And then, honestly, you get a very different whistle when you play on the road. Officials have a lot to do with the outcome of games when you're playing on the road as well. Reverse to Ramon. 
Malone has taken only one shot. Biggs from the foul line got it. That middle's open against the Seton Hall zone. You not only do you have to get it into the middle, but then you got to be ready to score when you get in there. That time Biggs did. But that's been open all night. Davis from the foul line tries to answer. Kicks high in the air and pulled down by Big. Here comes Ronald Ramon. Benjamin stops, pops. That one's too strong again. He's been too strong with all of his shots. Two on two. Hazel against Ramon. Not able to finish. Ball tipped out of bounds. The touch last by the Hall. Pittsburgh will have it. 8.20 to go, first half. And the longer Seton Hall stays in this, the better chance they have. And what you want to do if you're Seton Hall is be ahead going into those last five minutes of the game. And the Panthers do have one road win. It's the first time in over 10 years that they've opened with two straight Big East Conference regular season games on the road. The 6'8 junior. Same spot, middle of that zone defense. That's the weakness. We're on the campus of the University of Pittsburgh, the Peterson Event Center. For Seton Hall and Pitt, I'm John Sanders along with Mike Jarvis. Nutter into the lane. It took too many steps. Seven forty-five to play in the opening half. Pitt sprinted out to an eight-point lead. The Hall got within one. Right now they're down three in Pittsburgh. Parts of the puzzle are right there, and that's Cook and Fields. Cook is on the right, Levance Fields is on the left. Cook is done for the year, probably for his college career, since he's a redshirt senior. And you can see they're missing a lot of stats with those two guys gone. Well, they are, but you know what doesn't show? It's funny, since those guys have been out, they're up in points, they're up in the field goal percentage, their three point field goal percentage, and assists. So the guys who have come in for them have done a great job. Absolutely. Young with 10 points, he'll inbounds. He has 10 of the 18 that the Panthers have scored, and Blair has eight of the 15 pit rebounds. Blair comes to the rescue and finds Biggs. And back again, Ramon thought about a three. Instead goes to Benjamin. Still plenty of time on the shot clock. Back to the zone for Seton Hall, and that last time down was really kind of interesting. Uh, you're looking at uh, Ramon pass up the open three, and of course, a year ago, he never would have done that. Now he's a point guard. He's thinking more about assists. Five turnovers for the Panthers so far, leading by just three as we played 13 minutes of the opening half. That's what Blair does a lot of. He leads the team in steals. He does, but that also puts him in foul trouble That's right. sometimes. That's a good point. Lang fought his way inside and will get himself to the line. Now they list Brian at 6'5. He looks more like he's about 6'3 and a half. But I tell you what, he plays really big. And uh, for a guy at 6'4, 6'5 uh, listed, uh, he's averaging almost eight rebounds a game. And uh, that ought to motivate the bigger guys on this team to want to get more rebounds. Second leading scorer in the conference, an excellent foul shooter at 87%. He's okay. leading the scoring for his team. And as you predicted, Young is leading the scoring for Pitt so far this afternoon. Well, that was, those were some easy predictions. But they don't always come to fruition. Seven now for the senior from the Bronx. And here once again, Seton Hall, the 2-2-1 uh, pressure. And this is given this is given Pitt a little bit of a problem. What it's done is basically created some opportunities for, for them to put the hands, uh, the ball in the hands of big guys and maybe trap them over by the sideline. But you know the one thing that Pitt's not doing, not, not really attacking that pressure, because they can get some guys open down low and they haven't really done it. As soon as they've gotten across half court, they've reset in their half court offense. Well, once again, they're in that mindset of, of grinding it out, basically running their half court offense. And, you're right. Just sometimes you've got to attack that zone pressure in order to really make it work for you. Here's Nutter. Hazel trails him. Hazel should have went through and maybe opened up some space for him. Lang for three from long range and a nice rebound by Biggs. He'll look to Ronald Ramon and now the Panthers will push. Here's Benjamin. Ronald Ramon for three. Short. Racing back is Hazel. Now Nutter. This team's going a little cold right now. Well, yeah. And well, you know what happens though. These guys have got to play so many minutes that 
right now. Seton Hall's a little bit tired. They like to push it up a little more. Good feed, but not a good finish. Got the good pass to Garcia, but he couldn't finish. Benjamin with Blair. Blair up and foul. That lack of finish is partly due to a lack of legs. You know, once you get once those legs get tired, there's a lot of little things you can't do and you can't finish. Lang picks up his first six team fouls, so the Panthers will be in the one and one with the next Hall foul. 5.31 to play in the half. Blair have been a 66% free throw shooter in his first year of college basketball. <laughs> Doesn't get the roll. <laughs> Tried to will that one in. I'll show you what those two guys, Blair and Young, have done compared to the rest of the team. They have carried the way so far. And the other good news for Blair, no fouls so far this afternoon. That's great news for Pittsburgh. Not such good news for Seton Hall. Now, it was only fouled out of one game. But I think in the absence of Cook and Fields, it's more important that he stay out on the court. It is. And you know what? He's, he knows that, too. And that's the great thing. You know, he's made the adjustment. He's a smart player. And now he's, he knows he's got to be on the court for Pittsburgh. Sam Young picks up his first foul as he was battling Lang, who took it inside but did not make the basket. You know, I watch, John, I watch uh, Jamie work his team on the sideline. And every single possession, he expects a stop. Gilbert Brown with the rebound at the defensive end. Blair, fade away, rims out, follow, good by Young. A dozen for Sam. Nice one-handed follow on the weak side that time. Really good. Lack of the box out by Seton Hall, though. You've got to know where Young and Blair are at all times. One's going to be on the weak side, so you've got to box him out. Garcia tried to go back door and fired it off the back of Ramon. Six-point lead right now for the Panthers. They've been up by as many as eight. Mike Davis, the 6'11 freshman from Brooklyn, has checked in the lineup. Watch that, this follow. Right, but lock, but notice there was no blue jersey between him and the basket on the weak side. Got to box out. Lang and Young matched up. That's what we wanted to see. This is Harvey down the lane to the left hand and in. Second, the first field goal. Four points now for Eugene Harvey. Back to a five-point game. Or excuse me, four-point game at 21-17. Ramon pulls up in the lane and buries. Ronald's first basket of the afternoon. He's done a nice steady job with this uh, as, as as a one guard. You know, anytime you take a guy and change his position, uh, he's a two, he's become a one, and he's a key for Pitt. Harvey now. This is Lang against Ramon. Harvey dances down the lane, pulls up and hits it. Two in a row for Eugene Harvey. Harvey averaging almost 17 points a game. Brown almost walked with that ball. Looks like he did walk with it. Blair with a spin move, but he's held as he tried to get to the basket. And that one will go on Mike Davis. It'll be the first on him. Takes us to a break at the 336 mark. Here's Ramon coming to the jump stop and hitting the jumper. Panthers have the lead 23 and 19. Game 365. He's the colorful native of Binghamton who's had success wherever he goes. A top flight recruiter with unparalleled passion for the game. As a coach today, the big challenge is not just X's and O's. Every kid is different from the neck up. One guy needs to be hugged. Another guy might need a kick in the butt. It's a whole myriad of things that changes all the time. Fran Healy sits down with Seton Hall head coach Bobby Gonzalez on the Game 365, Sunday night at 1030 on MSG. It's 23-19, and since they've opened this beautiful facility on the campus, it's where the football stadium used to be. They are 89 and 80. <laughs> no one has beaten them here twice. Sam Young off to a great start. Take a look at what Sam has done. He's racked up 12 points already, and he has been the key to what's happened offensively for Pittsburgh. Well, he has, and he's done it in a lot of ways. He's done it with the three-point shot. He's done it getting in the lane, and he's done it, you know, obviously off the break, and then on the weak side, rebounding. 
He's got two or three baskets. Blair at the line. This is one and one now. Both teams will be shooting the rest of the first half. Nice stroke for the big guy. Real nice extension he's, follow through. He's got about a 10 or 15 foot jumper that he can use. Yeah. And when uh, he gets it down low with those good feet and the good hands, yeah. he's very tough. Oh, he is. Got them both. He's feeling pretty good about himself. I tell you what, he's playing with a lot of confidence and uh, really enjoying the game. And he's letting his light shine. There's no doubt about it. Well, we talk about this building being so good for Pitt. The hall has a brand new home court in downtown Newark called the Prudential Center, 18,500 capacity. So, no more trips to the Meadowlands. Well, that's a that's a big plus. The Meadowlands has never been a place that you know you really uh, for, for a senior hall could call home. It, you know, it's a pro arena, and it just never ever, ever felt like a college uh, facility. And of course, they did not have a lot of attendance there, which made it seem worse. Obviously. Oh, it did. But they're going to build some new hotels near their new arena in downtown Newark. So that's all a positive for Robert Gonzalez. Oh, big time. Second year. Ramon for three from straight away, and he's short. They've got numbers now. Garcia trails Harvey, who kicks it to the wing. Nutter on the drive, and they reverse to Lang. Lang with nine points. Tries to get around Brown. Spin move and a foul before the shot, I think. The basket is no good. It'll be number one on Gilbert Brown. We talked about the two guys in our star watch. There's the update. Well, I'll tell you what, the, the matchup and the head to head duel is uh, going pretty much as expected. And uh, both guys are doing what they have to do to give their team a chance for a victory today. And the hall is hanging in there, as you said. Double figures now for Lang. They were about three hours late leaving Newark Airport. And the hall has hit all five of its free throw attempts, so they didn't get here until much later than they expected. They did have an early morning shoot around here at the Peterson Center. Almost surprised in the way that they even came over this morning to shoot around, uh, you know, especially with their lack of depth. And uh, but Bobby didn't want to take any chances, so he came over and they shot for about a half an hour just to get a little familiar with the rims. It's like an early wake up call for your team. Yeah, because you got to get up and you got to eat anyhow, usually three and a half to four hours before your game. So uh, it, it, I'm sure it worked out really well uh, since they had to get up anyhow to have breakfast. Young hit from behind, dumps it down nice to Blair. Pass. 21 points combined between those two of the 27 that the Panthers have. It had an early eight point lead. The Hall got within one. Harvey on a drive and one. That time, if we see it again, Pittsburgh did not switch that. They usually switch everything on the perimeter. That time they didn't. There was a little indecision. Watch on the handoff. They usually switch that. That time they didn't. Gets to the rack, gets fouled, gets the basket to go along with it. Second foul on Brown, completing the three point play is Eugene Harvey. He now has nine points. So he and Lang have combined for 20 of their 26. Back to a one point game, and it's still pit basketball. They almost got the takeaway. And I think this pressure from Bobby Gonzalez is at time taking a toll on Pitt. It is especially he's making other people handle the ball and that's the one thing the three quarter court press will do and that's what they're using right now the two to one pressure action. And that's the way to handle it. Get it to Blair. <laughs> Bring the big guy up and if a big guy can catch and pass it really helps you. That Young from the foul line too strong tried to get it back. Benjamin does. He's got Ramon for three on the wing. Yes, sir. Rattled it home. You know, invariably, if you get a loose ball like that, or somebody's usually going to be open for a three, and I don't know why, it always seems to be one of your better shooters. Lang out in front, buries a two. And that's 13 now for Bryant. Very confident, just se seems to keep making the baskets to keep Seton Hall within striking distance. Almost stolen by Lang, Young for three, got it. His second three-pointer and 15 now for Sam Young. Panthers go back up 33-28, five-point difference. We're in the final minute. Lang on a drive, off the glass, good. 
Well, I'll tell you what, the stars are shining yes, bright. Yes, they are. And, but you got to know where those stars are. I mean, that's why we call them stars in the first place. Well, they both have 15 points, do Lang and Young. Benjamin keeps his dribble and then lost it. That's the third turnover in and, this first half by Benjamin. And potentially a very big turnover. It gives Seton Hall a chance to go in the locker room tied or down by one because they're going to take the last shot. You can count on that. And the party by this be by this guy right here. Pulls up in front of Young, rattles out, and a rebound to Blair. That'll do it. That will end the half. Pretty good half for the Hall. They hung right with the Panthers. It's 33 to 30 at halftime. A reminder what we have coming up. Look at some of the top early successes in the Big East by some of the teams. That's our Big East wire. We'll put a spotlight on Jamie Dixon. And of course, we will have all the highlights and stats of the opening 20 minutes of basketball. Panthers did not trail the entire half. They had at one point an eight point lead. They wind up heading to the locker room up by three. It's 33 30. The Panthers leading Seton Hall. Young and Lang battling head to head. They've each got 15 points. Welcome back to halftime here at the Pete, as they call it. We're on the campus of the University of Pittsburgh. And first up at halftime, we'll check out. Today's edition of the Big East Wire, and on the Big East Wire, we're going to take a closer look at some of the teams at the top of the Big East standings early on in the conference season. Preseason Big East Player of the Year Roy Hibbert hasn't lit the world on fire with his stats so far this season, but he is the unquestioned leader of a balanced Georgetown team, and his presence has been a big factor in the Hoyas' terrific start to the season. He's a young man uh, that is extremely willing as a player and it's someone that you know has a lot of God-given ability and then you couple that with his intelligence and his work ethic uh, and his caring about not just his individual development but about our team's development. We are in selfish players, you know, everybody's points that has to be 14, 14, 12, you know, 10, 10. So obviously the people distribute the ball well, people shoot the ball well. So we're just gonna get it done this year. Notre Dame was picked to finish ninth in the Big East in the preseason coaches poll, but so far they have been a surprise, starting strong largely due to the efforts of a trio of scores, Luke Herringote, Kyle McAlarney, and Rob Kurz. One of the best things about our team is that we have really good chemistry. We have a bunch of guys who share the ball, so you know I don't think um, you know one guy is going to try to do too much. I think you know Coach uh, Coach Bray really does a good job of making sure you know, we play together as a team, and and no one feels like they have to you know score too much or do anything individually. Syracuse is off to a great start to their season behind their two super freshmen, Dante Green and Johnny Flynn. The duo were picked as preseason Big East co-rookies of the year and have not disappointed with Green one of the league's leading scorers so far and Flynn feeding him the ball as one of the league's assist leaders. I like our freshmen. I think they're very talented kids. They're mature. They're better than the average freshmen. Uh, some freshmen have no clue. These guys do have a clue. If you're just an, old, uh, an ordinary freshman, pretty good freshman, uh, those guys usually need a full year before they're ready to contribute. Uh, a higher level talent player can contribute sooner. Marquette had high hopes entering this season due to the return of their junior sensations, Dominic James, Jarrell McNeil, and Wesley Matthews. The three, along with sharpshooting senior forward Dan Fitzgerald, have more than upheld those expectations while vaulting the Golden Eagles into a great position heading into the thick of the Big East schedule. It's going to happen, you know. I just, I just feel that we're, we're a, a tight-knit group. Everybody, I mean, we're a veteran group. Our, our new guys are coming along well. And, I mean, we just play physical, play smart, and I think we go wherever we want to go. A look at some of the best in the Big East Conference as conference play really heats up. And we'll be back with more on our Big East Halftime Report. When we return, we're going to turn the spotlight on Coach Jamie Dixon. We'll be back in Pittsburgh right after this. continue with our Big East halftime report the matchup between Seton Hall and Pitt and today's Big East coaches spotlight is brought to you by Oppenheimer funds and let's take a closer look at Jamie Dixon and what you see is pretty good isn't it well what you see is great uh, you see a guy who uh, 
has picked up right where Coach uh, Ben Howland left off, and that is getting his team deep into the NCAA tournament, winning Big East championships. And, uh, you know, you look at his stats, and, you, and, and the stats basically con conclude and prove that uh, he's a guy who's uh, first all-time, I mean all-time, Big East winning percentage coach. Uh, followed by four Hall of Famers, and third in the NCAA as far as active coaches. So you have a great coach, a great teacher, communicator, and a guy who gets his team to play unselfish basketball and great defense every single night. And they continue to play well, off to another good start. We've got more to come. We'll have highlights and stats when we return with more of today's Big East Halftime Report that will follow these messages. Stay with us. Getting ready for the second half. It's 33-30 at intermission. We're in the Peterson Event Center on a Saturday afternoon along with Mike Jarvis. I'm John Sanders, and I give the Hulk credit. They're hanging tough so far. I'll tell you what, they really are. I mean, it's a one-possession game, and despite the fact that they've been out-rebounding on the boards, they're doing a great job. Take a look at some of the highlights, and if you talk about fit, most of the damage was done by number 23. Well, it was in many, many different ways uh, with the three-pointer, with moves in the lane, with a lot of offensive rebounding. Uh, he has done a great job for them. And Seton Hall, of course, at the other end, uh, Lang has done a great job. Uh, you know, always seems to make the big basket. And then, of course, no switch that time by Pitt leads to a driving layup by Harvey. Young and Lang with 15 each. Those are our PNC first half highlights brought to you by our friends at PNC. And we've got more to come. Stay with us. We'll be back to the Peterson Event Center on the campus of the University of Pittsburgh, where the Panthers lead by three. Okay, listen up, people. I'm talking to you, fans, coaches, and players. It's been brought to my attention that not all of you have been displaying good sportsmanship. I simply will not tolerate taunting, name-calling, cursing, or any behavior that shows a lack of respect. I want you to act with class and dignity at all times. After all, kids do look up to you. You're role models. Now let's get out there and show them how it's done. The road to Gotham is riddled with formidable obstacles. Beware the blue demons, huskies, and pirates. Heed the wildcats' roar. Fear the friars. Before you can reach the pinnacle, you must survive a litany of stern challenges. In the Big East Conference, you come to play every game, or you never reach the gates of the city. Experience is an excellent teacher. And what over 45 years of experience has taught Oppenheimer Funds is the strength of a balanced approach and the effectiveness of a diversely skilled team. Valuable lessons that guide us through an ever-changing financial landscape. Oppenheimer Funds, the right way to invest. Carefully consider fund investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses. Call your advisor for a prospectus with this and other fund information. Read it carefully before investing. Tara Gielig is a real Geico customer, not a paid celebrity. So to help tell her story, we hired the Pips. Not long ago, I was in a car accident. Ooh, bender, bender. With Geico's Auto Repair Express, the adjuster, repair shop, and rental car were all right there. Rental car smells like sunshine. To top it off, my rates stay the same. Take a train to happy town. Geico. Real service, real savings. We know you like style. We know you like performance. We thought you'd like fuel economy and a great warranty as well. With the Pontiac G6 Adapt, you get 30 EPA estimated highway miles per gallon and more horsepower than Camry and a 100,000-mile five-year powertrain limited warranty. The new Pontiac, designed for action. Only a three-point lead at halftime, and these teams both under their numbers for the season. The Hall averaging over 83 points a game, and the Panthers averaging almost 79 points a game, and you can see the lopsided scoring. 48 of the total of 63 points have been scored by four guys in this game this afternoon. Well, they have, and you know, we talked about the two guys who were star watch, but don't forget uh, DeWan Blair, the freshman, with nine points and nine rebounds. Pretty good first half of basketball. 
Here's Nutter for three. Tried to tie the ball game, and the rebound went out of the hands of Gilbert Brown, the redshirt freshman who was injured three games into last season, took his redshirt, and has come back and gotten himself in the starting lineup. And we will see this constant pressure from the hall. This time it's just straight man to man pressure. And one of the things they wanted to do coming in was to go after after Ramon. Lang holds his hip as he got banged as he went around and picked up the steal seventh turnover and keep in mind the guy that specializes in steel is Paul Gauze and he's out with a broken hand probably won't play for another week or so. Well when they get him back that'll make a big difference that'll give these guys a little bit of a rest because most of them played the whole first half. Nutter has missed two three point shots in the second half Blair with his tenth rebound of the afternoon. Yeah he can't settle for that three he's got to get that ball into the lane first. And they're also missing Michael Glover who has still not been cleared by the NCAA to play. Well that's going to be a big difference if he's anything like his brother Anthony uh, the man child that used to play at St. John's played for me now playing overseas. Uh, he's going to be a great addition. Well, Lang has that quick pull up. And Blair had it and lost control out of bounds. It'll be the hall basketball. Neither team has scored in the first minute of the second half. Lang still rubbing that hip a little bit. Well, he'll rub that hip until he scores a basket. That's then it'll true. get better. It'll feel, it'll feel fine. <laughs> Trust me. And Nutter turns it back over to the Panthers. Fifth turnover of the afternoon. Let's take a look and see what happened to Lang as he went for the steal and got it, but paid a little bit of a price against Young. Well, he did, and Young did a nice job using his body to try and shield him off. Even though he got the, got the steal, he had to be paid for it. Starters the same both ways here in the second half. Benjamin to the baseline. He's not scored. Blair from outside nails it. Well, I give you credit on that one, John. You were saying that the big guy can step out to the free throw line and make those, and he certainly proved you right. Biggest lead for the Panthers in the first half was eight. Now up five. Lang. That quick pull up jumper and he buries it. You know, it's funny. He looks like he's much more comfortable shooting the ball off the bounce than he is off the catch. Blair now with that basket has a double double. Benjamin thought he was fouled by Harvey. It'll be pit basketball. No foul. You got to do a lot better job protecting the ball. He's lucky he didn't get it stolen that time. He's kind of sagging a little bit in yeah, his body language. I don't know why. I mean, he's playing so great. He missed a couple of shots. So what? Just play. Don't have to worry about anybody coming in for you now. He'll shoot a three. Hey. Got that one. There you go. That'll get him going. I guarantee you. That's the first basket of the afternoon for Keith Benjamin, who's a 40% three-point shooter. Garcia down low. The you foul will go on number 11 Brown. That'll be three, three on him. Yeah, when you catch the ball that deep, you have to finish. That's where coaches want you to go up and try to flush it down. Get the, you know, dunk it, get foul, but make the basket. Well, the foul line's not a good place for Garcia, though. He's at 54%. Well, he's not a really good offensive player, but he's doing a great job with his team defensively and clogging up the middle. Nothing wrong with that stroke. Three points now for the 6'9 sophomore from Bayshore, New York. And it's Biggs into the lineup to replace Brown, who goes out with three fouls. But Biggs was effective in the first half with a couple of baskets. The Hall has not missed until now from the free throw line. They had made eight straight. That ends by Garcia. Young. All the way across the foul line. Biggs from outside. Yes. Tyrell Biggs. on Young this is going to be a three that's too strong and the rebound by Benjamin on that weak side Hazel with the miss yeah not a good shot they need good shots right now more than ever Young missed that jumper maybe a little quick on the trigger but he had the look he wanted so he took the shot well, you don't want to get down by 10 against this pit team you want to keep it keep it keep it low and you want to try to be in the lead going into the last five minutes of the game then you got a chance to win it. They had a had it down to one a couple different times in the opening half. And Lang is limping toward the bench. Yeah he's really hurting from that from that contact uh, that we, we, we looked at earlier. Uh, he'll be checked out by the trainer who's Heather Worthy and actually Heather Worthy was spending a good deal of time before the game talking to one of the pit assistants. 
And that would be Brandon Knight, who's the director of operations, because she went to graduate school here at Pitt, and so they know each other from way back. Shot clock inside 10. Remember, it did not reset. Harvey on the drive, sets up a three from the corner. That rims out. Garcia follows, no good. And still they get it up and miss. That's three point blank shots. That's blocked, and that'll be the first foul on Dewan Blair. That was all effort on uh, the part of Seton Hall, just kept going after it. Of course, now you got to make uh, make them pay by making these free throws. Let's we'll see if the big guy bends his knees a little bit more and gets his body under the shot, which he didn't do the last one he took. So Garcia back at the foul line. He made one out of two, his first chance here in the second half. He'll have another one coming. You know, and as you get tired, you got to bend a little bit more. You got to get more and more legs into your shot. And you look good on both of those. John Garcia has five points. They've cut the lead down to five. And uh, they're going to take Lang into the locker room where they can probably work on him a little bit better. He's got to get back, though, to have, for this team to have a, a chance here. You're absolutely correct. Remember, both he and Nutter fouled out of that Marquette game late. This is Young. Benjamin, who hit his first three a minute ago. Biggs from outside. Good looking shot. Yeah, that middle continues to be open against the zone of Seton Hall. Larry Davis is back out there. This is Harvey. Harvey came alive in the second half. Sam Young did a lot of his scoring early in the first half, and then it was Lang who came on in the second half of that opening period. A steal by Benjamin. They've got numbers three on two. And he gives it right back and cost him a foul on Sam Young. Yeah, it's a double turnover. Uh, you know, a shot you don't get, and then you pick up a foul. Those fouls come back to hurt you later. Take us to our first timeout here in the second half with 15.20 to play. Four and a half minutes gone. The Panthers have stretched their halftime lead from three to seven. The Orange and Blue are back at the Garden for a visit from the Motor City. Catch Jamal Crawford and the rest of the Knicks when they take on Rasheed Wallace and the Pistons. The Knicks and Pistons, Sunday night, only on MSG. College basketball snaps into focus on FSN New York. Binghamton looks to make some noise at home against conference rival Stony Brook. Tuesday night on FSN New York. It is the Panthers leading by seven at 42-35. Along with Mike Jarvis, I'm John Sanders. And missing right now is a big piece of the puzzle for the Hall. And that's what happened. A little hip pointer for well, Lang. It looks like it when he came around that time on the defensive end, got the steal. But, you know, Young fighting him off. They go hip to hip. And uh, that could end up being maybe one of the key plays of the game. We'll see if he can come back. And that will depend on the ex, uh, the ex pit uh, trainer. Yeah. See how fast she brings him back. Lang has almost half of the points for the Pirates, who are 10 and 5 overall, 0 and 2 in conference play, losing at home to UConn, losing on the road at Marquette. But that was a game that they probably feel they should have won against Marquette. Most definitely, uh, you know, with the free throws and then the foul discrepancy, they definitely feel they they could have won that game. You know, it's significant here that you know with uh, Lang out the game, if Seton Hall can hang in there and stay close. When he comes back, he'll be fresh because he didn't get a chance to get a break at all. Could play, could really help them. But he's got to come back. Young runs into a three. 18 for him. His third three-pointer. He is shooting that three like he's always been a three-point shooter, John. And it's such a relaxed shot. There was no nerves involved at all. And Bobby Gonzalez, now down by double figures, has to take a 30-second timeout. And a good timeout because the one thing you don't want, you don't want to let this game get away from you now. And Neither team wants to really be behind because neither team has the depth to really try to press to get back in this thing. Well, Sam Young has been leading the way from the very beginning. His first basket of the night was a three, and his last basket, at least to this point, is another three. And the Panthers up by 10. At a rhythm, a beat, a pulse like nowhere else. New York City is a city. Little over. Uh, Five minutes gone in the second half. Ten point lead. Let's take a look now at our select stats brought to you by Select Sector Spiders. Three point shooting dominated by the Panthers who made two here in the second half in the hall. Coming into this game shooting about 32 percent. And they're way off that mark. Young has made all three of his three point tries. 
You know, threes are really, if you shoot 33% or better, then that's okay because that's equivalent to 50% from the field. Harvey gets around bigs and lays it home. So Harvey is now in double figures with 11. And as you saw, I hope you noticed that Mr. Lang is back. Yes, and here he comes is. that zone press that was effective at times in the opening half. If anything, it takes 10 seconds off the shot clock. Well, right now, that's not a that's not a bad thing for Seton Hall. Uh, they need to just try to make this get this game down, maybe get it to four or five points, and then try to see if they can get it. Up. Blair tied up from behind by Davis, and the Panthers will keep it. You know, the one danger for Pitt tonight, uh, many people felt you and I talked about it, was the fact that they could be looking a little bit ahead to their game coming up against Georgetown. And uh, certainly that's what Seton Hall is hoping for. Sam Young handles the inbound fast and leaves it to Ronald Ramon. I know you're looking forward to a trip to West Virginia and with the shot clock winding down. That is his second three. That made him feel like the old days when he used to be the two guard shooting threes. Ups the lead to 11 biggest of the afternoon. And I'm happy to report that the Oakland Zoo presented my colleague here <laughs> with his Oakland Zoo t-shirt. Harvey gets inside then reverses. And I promised them if I didn't wear it that Mrs. J would. Three pointer that's the answer from the corner by Larry Davis. He's got five. And that couldn't come at a better time. Now Benjamin will handle. Drives down the lane dishes it off. Blair makes a nice catch and a left handed finish. I think the catch was better than the shot. Much better than the than, than the than the pass. Uh, you know, Keith, you know, has a habit sometime of not using the bounce pass. There's the third layup tonight, okay, by Harvey getting all the way to the rim. That's something you normally don't see against Pittsburgh. And there was no weak side help on that drive. You know, they were all alone. Very seldom do you see that happen against a pit team. Benjamin looking for his second three. And that hits the bottom of the net, gives the senior six. And a timeout. Wanamaker will come back for Pitt. And one of the big guys, Okerson, coming back for Seton Hall. But the Panthers use their timeout with 13.02 to play here in the second half. But what you had in that last shot was you had the combination of a guy that was making the instant middle shots and bigs. He got it. They went to him, and then he's able to kick it off with the open three with Benjamin. And inside-outside basketball works every time, doesn't well, it? Well, especially if you make some shots inside, then it works even more so. Ramon, of course, makes his by himself off the deep bounce, and then, of course, uh, Benjamin gets his off of a nice middle feed, where you'll see here from for Biggs out to Benjamin. And of course, Biggs is, they have to cover him because he's been making that basket. He's, that's right. He's got four of those little 10 footers. And what that'll force Seton Hall to do is go man to man, I guarantee you. And the Panthers are four for four shooting the threes in the second half. And against Lafayette a week ago, they had a huge second half, scored 57 points. Larry Davis. Draws a crowd, reverses now to Lang. We're inside 13 minutes to play. In regulation, because four of the first 10 games for the Hall, that was a carry by Hazel. They went to overtime. They did back-to-back -back games. They had some real battles. Really did. And uh, you know, once again, when you're when you're late in numbers, the more minutes you play, the tougher it is. Assistant coach Harry in there over, holding up the 15 option call. Former head coach at College of Charlestown. In fact, he used to be a, a, a volunteer assistant of mine a long time ago back in Cambridge when I had a big guy by the name of Patrick Ewing. Yeah, that was a pretty good player you had. Not there. bad. <laughs> good effort by Brown using the glass, using that wide body to get inside and finish the shot. Panthers' biggest lead now. They're up 13. This is, as you said, the danger point for the Hall. It is. It's like uh, right now this game could be over if they don't make a, a stop and don't get a couple of baskets. Inside. Watermaker on a run out. We'll take it all the way. Misses the shot. Biggs is there for the rebound. He puts it up. That one won't go. Now Blair is going to get to the foul line. All right. We're heading to another break. The Panthers working hard inside. The effort there by the freshman, Dewan Blair, and a good finish. 
hit by 13. To huddle, they have opened up their biggest lead of the afternoon, 55 to 42, a 13-point edge. I'm John Sanders with Mike Travis, and we weren't kidding about the Oakland Zoo T-shirt. But if you come back and coach in the Big East, you're going to have to give it back to them. You know that. Well, I might. Let me tell you, if I come back and coach in the Big East, I'm wearing this. That's a promise. <laughs> okay. Well, the question is, does the Hall have a run in them here now? Well, you know what? I think they do. And uh, if I'm gonna, if I'm the Hall, I'm gonna find out how good Lang's hip is, and I'm going to him maybe my next four or five possessions down court, because he's the guy that'll give him that chance to get back in this game. This is Wanamaker back to Biggs, and now Ramon. Chances have utilized the three-point shot in the early part of this second half. Biggs from Blair. They hand it back to Ramon. Still 20 on the shot clock, and the Panthers really in no hurry. Biggs with some penetration. Stepped out of bounds. Oh, another turnover by Pitt. Well, those turnovers will certainly help keep you in the game if you're Seton Hall. Now you got to score, though. You got to combine stops and scores to give yourself a chance. Nine times the Panthers have turned it over, and in that loss, the one point loss of Villanova, they turned it over 22 times. Davis rattles home a three. That's his second. He's got eight. And he's averaging 6.6. And I was going to say that, you know, he's hit two big threes this half. And, of course, they need, they're going to need somebody other than Lang to score. So maybe he's the guy. Gilbert Brown set to return for Pitt. And Ramon avoids some hand checking by Eugene Harvey. And gets it to DeWan Blair. Ramon. A little head fake for the three. And then it rattles out at the foul line. Young and Biggs with the rebound and a foul called underneath. That'll go on Harvey. And I've got three on Harvey. Here's Gilbert Brown back in, and Dewan Blair will get a blow. Good, good time to give the big fella a little bit of a break. He won't be out more than a minute and a half or two, I guarantee. Wanamaker from the side. Rebound by Davis. Pushes ahead to Harvey. And Harvey almost traveled, but he loves to drive, doesn't he? Well, not only does he love to drive, but he's really good at getting into the lane where he can produce shots for himself or his teammates. That's number four now on Gilbert Brown. So Gilbert Brown did not play very long. He made a quick foul, goes back to the bench as Keith Benjamin comes back on. He's the first player in any kind of foul trouble. Over the top to Lang. Lost it on the way up. Still put up the shot. <laughs> you know, the little guys, I'll tell you what, probably the best post players in basketball are the guards. I mean, they are so good around the basket. I don't know why a lot more teams don't post up their guards and let them go to work inside. Well, Harvey likes to work inside, obviously. He's got 15 points. You know, they've got such great, such a knack of, of, of protecting the ball and and you know they're so athletic they can throw up shots from any angle. Now Eugene is having a pretty good afternoon, helping yeah. to keep his team in this ball game. He's is... got that lead back to seven again. It had been 13. Now Wanamaker will control the Panthers. 10:25 to play in the ball game. Pitt looking for its 14th win of the year against just two losses. Well, you know, with 10 minutes to go, it's back under 10. It's a seven-point game, and, uh, you know, Seton Hall's still got a chance here. Benjamin looking for his third three of the second half. Gets it. He was very quiet. Did not score in the first half. Turned the ball over about three times, but he has made up for that here in the second half. Nutter's been kind of quiet today. He has only two points. Yes, he has. They've done a nice job defending Nutter. Lang from the corner. Air ball into the hands of Wanamaker. Oh, he had Young almost missed him. I thought he was not going to find him, but he did. 20 for did. And Lang's hurting, John. Uh, you know, and he's let the hip and bother his shooting. And uh, you can tell that uh, he, probably the best thing right now is to get him out of the game. Well, he's limping back toward the bench. Benjamin with his third three-pointer here in the second half. The Panthers have made five. And a nice dish at the last moment that time by Wanamaker. Once again, without the bounce pass, they're still getting it through. So it's back to a 12-point edge, 60 to 48. Panthers are down to their final timeout. The Hall still with four remaining. 
But I tell you what Seton Hall's going to have to do is find some options offensively to get points. Well, they really are, and I, I don't know where they're going to come from. Obviously, they'll look for uh, Harvey to get in the lane, and they'll uh, look for Davis to maybe throw. Maybe it's Larry Davis is the guy that's going to have to make some more threes. We're at the Peterson Event Center. We're on the campus of the University of Pittsburgh for Big East Conference regular season basketball. The Hall walks it up. I'm John Sanders alongside Mike Jarvis, the proud owner of a brand new Oakland Zoo t shirt. <laughs> Davis tracks down the rebound. And the first clock. We are past the midway point in the second half. Panthers lead a dozen. And Lang has gone back to the bench. Davis on the drive. And a blocking foul called on the Panthers. That'll go on Biggs. That's his third. Well, that's a call you like to get when you're on the road. You like to get that sort of like, is it or isn't it call? And here it is right here. And you could see he stepped into the last second. Jim Burr got it right. He like usually he does, does, doesn't he? <laughs> yeah, he does. There's Lang back alongside. Right now, his best friend, Heather Worthy, the trainer. Yeah. Which is too bad for the Hall. One of two. Nice rebound by Young. Well, I certainly hope he's okay. I mean, this is one. This game is one thing, but you know, the season certainly is another. Yeah, they went over a thousand points in the Marquette game in his career. The other guy closing in on a thousand is Jamar Nutter, but he only has two this afternoon. Mm -hmm. So he's still 37 points away from that select club. Wanamaker will try a three. That's short. The rebound pulled down by Garcia. Back comes the hall on the run. Harvey, who loves to drive, throws it away. Almost to Bobby Gonzalez. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, Bobby did def definitely did not want to catch that one. Blair returns. Sam Young will get a blow. Sam Young leading the way with 20 points. Blair with 15. Blair another double double. They'll take some time off the clock. Well, the clock is definitely now, and this whole game is in, obviously is in Pitt's favor. Ramon for three. Yes. That's his second 11 points for the senior from the Bronx. Well, you know, even though he's playing that point guard position, John, he's got to continue to look for his jump shot for Pitt to really be as good as they want to be. Well, you talked about it earlier. That's the way to get it when you get the ball into the big man and then you get it back outside. Well, especially when you got big guys that can score and that got good pins that can pass it like Blair and Big Scan. Ronald Ramon with his second three pointer in the second half. Panthers have made six three pointers according to my numbers in the second half. Well, you know, since those guys have been out, have been hurt, you know, I had a little stat sheet here. Let me find it. They, they're shooting 50. Uh, I've got 55 percent, 53 percent, and now that's even gone up tonight. I mean, from the three-point line since since the injuries to Fields and uh, and Cook. Biggest lead of the afternoon. Nutter on the drive against Wanamaker. Hazell from straight away for three. High rebound. Diving for it was Blair. How about that hustle? Big oh, ends up tracking him down, but Blair was stretched out trying to pull it in. Benjamin on the move. All the way down the lane. Kicks it to Wanamaker. Passes on three. A tough shot along the baseline. Tough shot. If, you know, a little bit more of a reputation, maybe he gets a foul call. There's a three. Saved by Biggs. Here comes Ronald Ramon now on the move. Wanamaker. Nice look. He was out of bounds. Oh, Benjamin turns it back the other way. 63-49 is our score. Seven minutes and 27 seconds of Big East basketball left from Pittsburgh. The Panthers have opened up their biggest lead of the day. 727 to play. Panthers on top 63 to 49. And they are doing an excellent job shooting the three-pointers, especially in the second half of this game. 
Young, of course, got him off him going in the first half. Well, he did, and uh, you know when he's shooting that three-point shot so effortlessly, and then of course you combine that with the other things he can do, and of course Lang, you know, shooting, uh, playing very well until his injury right, right here, there. where he gets hip to hip, and uh, it was all downhill for uh, Signal in him after that. Well, he is back on the court again. Lang has returned. He's left twice because of the hip problem. Sam Young with 20 points. 50% shooting for him, five rebounds, and Dewan Blair has a double double. Well, you're going to have to shoot him, I think, to get him off the court in this game or any other game. The young man loves to play basketball and compete. Biggs on Lang. This is Nutter. Warner Paint Wanamaker picks him up. That's blocked out of bounds by Dewan Blair, who's trailing the play. He had tried to cut him off outside, then he went back underneath and batted it out. That's what a seven foot wingspan will do for you. Even when you're out of position, you got a chance of blocking the shot. Davis with it outside as we wind down to seven minutes. Steal by Benjamin. He's got trailers. Benjamin will lean in, miss the shot. Biggs has the rebound, and he'll go to the foul line. That wasn't so bad, you know, shot. I mean, driving to the basket, pulling up. Like, like Benjamin did that time was okay. When you pull up for a three-point shot, you know, at the end of a break without somebody inside, that's another thing. Biggs for a couple at the free throw line. First chance he's had this afternoon. The thing that makes Biggs, I think, very valuable for this Pittsburgh team is the fact that even though he's a big body, because of his ability to be able to get down low and move those feet, he can defend, you know, big big wings out on the perimeter as well and then of course he creates an impossible matchup for a wing to guide him in the low post. Still 63 49. Still got a ball game here. Seton Hall can make a couple hoops. Another drive by Harvey. That one he couldn't finish. Garcia is fouled. Got to finish those big guy. That foul is number two on Dewan Blair. Tell you what, if Seton Hall gets young Glover, Michael Glover, who I know can finish, it's going to make them a whole new team. Well, they also have, oh, sitting out this year, Robert Mitchell, a transfer from Duquesne, who was Duquesne's leading scorer from last year. In fact, I think he was the leading freshman scorer in the country last year, to be honest with you. Well, he is transferred, so he's sitting out. Young returns, Biggs departs. And they've signed Jordan Theodore to they come in next year from yeah. Inglewood, New Jersey. They call him Ear Jordan, appropriately so. But one of two at the line for Garcia, and that's kind of been his story. Make one, miss one. Well, we are proud to have you with us. This game is produced and distributed by ESPN Regional Television, Incorporated. Panthers this time handle the pressure, get it all the way over to Young. He's backing there. He's got the size advantage. Little runner that goes. He had another on him that time, and he took him to the cleaners. They do such a great job, Pitt does, recognizing mismatches and creating basically opportunities for guys to shoot over people. And of course, they got some great people to do that in Young and Biggs and Blair, and uh, they take advantage of that. Young blocks Lang, and then Lang commits the foul. Well, there's that 6-6 six, six against maybe 6-4. Uh, and and, and the, as long as, you know, Young keeps his distance, he's got an advantage defensively. Here's that back end, John. Just keeps backing him in until he can take the good old-fashioned hook shot. That's such a great shot. Everybody, every player in basketball should have that in his repertoire. But a lot of them don't. No, they don't. I mean, not the practice. Coaches practice it. Kids just, maybe it's not cool enough. They don't want to use it. But uh, it's a great shot to have, no matter how big or how small you are. Oh, they want to rise and dunk is what uh, they want to do. Yeah, they do. But Brown from just outside the foul line, bending, bending off from the rebound to Garcia. 5.40 to play. Yeah, Seton Hall needs some baskets, and they need them in a hurry, and they need some stops. This is the point in the game where you need three in a row. <laughs> Jim Bird just laughed. As, uh, and, and I don't blame him. I mean, you don't look for it. That's not a time in a game or a situation where you look for a charge. Well, he, he flopped on that one, and Ronald Ramon handling the pressure. Looks to Brown. Young for three. Whistles at home, 25. That's a new career high 
for Sam Young. Four three pointers for him in a career ball game. How do you play him now making the three John. I mean how can you play a guy that can take the ball into the lane who's hitting threes like he is almost it's almost impossible. Lang a little short and you can see he's bothered by that injury very much so and I think he's bothered psychologically by it as well as physically. But you know it's a lot easier for us to sit over here and you know look at a game and you know you might say well gee that guy's not toughing it out but, I, but the injury is probably a lot worse than any of us even realize and we probably won't know until tomorrow when he's had it really checked out. Blair has 13 rebounds now. Look for a high screen here. Ronald Ramon. It's too hard. Harvey races back and draws the foul. Oh, they're definitely a foul. I mean, I know the fans are saying, ooh. That's going to be called nine out of ten times. One of the differences for Lang is in the first half, he had 15 points. He's got two in the second half. Yeah, and, and you know what? It's not, not totally because of what Pitt's doing. I think it's a combination of the fact that he missed some easy shots early in the second half and then the injury. A lot of guys right now, John, holding shorts, pulling shorts down. Yeah. That's a sign of fatigue. His, his not on the, on, on the drive. Uh, it did look like he got ball. But you come down with that hand and nine times out of ten, they're going to call it. I'm sorry, I said no, I meant Harvey. <laughs> yes, definitely. 18 for Harvey. He's had a big afternoon. He's averaging about 17. He's got 18 today. Well, he certainly has, has lived up to, you know, his advanced billing as being a guy that's going to be one of the key men for Seton Hall. Well, they broke the press and had numbers that time. Blair with a spin move and up and under, and he'll go to the free throw line. Davis in there picks up the foul, I think. Mike Davis, yes. That'll be his second. Okerson is in the lineup for Seton Hall. Nutter still out there along with Larry Davis. And Blair at the free throw line is three of four so far. Working on a double double. Nice form. Nice for the big guy from the free throw line. He continues to, to make those free throws. What's he, four for five now from yes. three from the free throw line? Right. And he's been the freshman of the week three different times already this season. And conference play is really just heating up. Well, I'll tell you what, if Pitt keeps winning, he could be freshman of the year. And Sam Young, uh, I mean, I don't, I don't know if they've got an award for the most improved player or not, but he might be the most improved player in the Big East. Harvey battles his way inside, can't finish. Blair, another rebound. That's 14 for him. Ronald Ramon pushes it up. That's a day's work, I'll tell you, 14 rebounds. Is that mismatch that they that they look for and try to create? So he just hands it over to Blair, who is fouled on the play, and the foul goes on Mike Davis. That'll be three on him. But that's the kind of low post passing that this team has become noted for. Most definitely. Panthers lead by 16 points, 70 to 54, and Sam Young enjoying a career high game. Young with 25 points, including four three pointers. Today's Big East game has been brought to you by Pontiac, official performance machines of the NCAA. Select Sector Spiders. Start weaving a stronger portfolio today. Visit us on the web at sectorspdrs.com or call 1-800-THE-AMEX. Champion, how you play. And by Advance Auto Parts, we're ready in advance. We welcome you back. It's a 16 point lead. Let's check out a game changing performance brought to you by Pontiac. And this guy has really turned things on today. Well, I'll tell you what, it's a combination of some really good coaching and teaching, and also a lot of work in the offseason by this guy that used to just be able to do this dunk and score in the lane. Now, because of the summer work, he knocks down the three like it's a layup. A career day for him with 25 points. Made all four of his three point attempts, also seven rebounds. Blair at the line working on another double double. He missed there. He's got 17 points. You want 20, big guy, you got to make the free throws. One out of two. 
He's five of eight shooting free throws, 18 to go with his 14 rebounds. <laughs> That's a pretty good day's work, isn't yeah, it's it? It's not a bad uh, day's work at all. Harvey on a drive, and we'll go to the line. Well, Bobby Gonzalez is over there working still, and uh, and you know what he's got? He's done a nice job with this uh, Seton Hall program. He's got it heading in the in the right direction. Not that it wasn't before, because it certainly was under Louis Orr. But uh, you know, this young man right here, uh, Mr. Harvey, uh, has really, really done a nice job taking the ball to the basket against the bigger pit team. He's got 21 points. Juan Blair picks up his third personal foul. Benjamin thought about three. Worked the clock a little bit. 3.20 to go in the game. Panthers leading 71-57. This is Ronald Ramon who's done a good job handling the basketball. He gets some constant pressure. He's done a great job. And of course, he's been, you know, really smart using, using Young and using Blair at just the right times. Inside 10 on the shot clock. Ramon a drive. Garcia the rejection with three on the shot clock. This is a tricky. This is a tricky time here. You know, you want to try to get the five, get the, you know, have that shot clock work for you, and at the same time, uh, you know, you got a chance of giving up a layup if you don't play it just right. Gilbert Brown for three. Too strong. Rebound Garcia. Here he comes on the drive again. Harvey high off the glass, no good. Rebound by. Davis and a foul called inside. Mike Davis got the board and he'll go to the line. You see, you see what Harvey does on the drive. I mean, something that's very difficult to teach. You learn in the playgrounds. He drives, he gets in the lane, he cuffs the ball. All right, so it's almost like he's taking the ball and he's hiding it from the defense, and all of a sudden it's show and tell, and usually it's a good shot and a score. One out of two for Mike Davis, another freshman, good size, 6'11". I remember Mike when he was a uh, 14, 12, 13, 14, 14 year old, a gym rat. Good feed to Blair. He hits the deck. He is fouled hard. And Davis will come over and help Blair up. See that smile? It's always on his face. It's unbelievable. And I'll tell you what, too, John, this is the point in time in the game. You like to, if you're Jamie Dixon, maybe another 30 seconds you think about getting the big guy out the game. You don't want any injuries. They've had two, actually three major injuries, and that's the first time in years that uh, Jamie Dixon and company have had to face that kind of problem. Well, uh, guys maybe miss a game or two, but exactly not extended period as they have had so far this year. No, and that's we now the big guy. What you do if you're Dewan Blair at this stage of the game is this is where you use the backboard. This is where you just go up and get to the old-fashioned way. You forget about the dunks and the spectacular plays and just just finish and stay healthy. A little over two and a half to play. Hits that one. So seven of ten at the free throw line, 19 points for Dewan Blair. Shot clock did not start. I don't know if it was supposed to. No, it wasn't supposed to. Doesn't start until it's touched in bounds, and that looks like about a eight-second discrepancy. It should have been maybe 237. So let's see what happens. Now Jim Burr and Curtis Shaw will talk it over. I think you're going to see those guys again tomorrow when you're down in West Virginia. Yeah, they'll they'll take that ride together to, to, tonight to West Virginia, you know, and then they'll probably watch the football game, the Pats later. Of course, Jim, uh, Mr. Shaw, Curtis is over here giving the fans a little bit of lecture on officiating and how to run the shot clock. Nutter with his first three-pointer of the afternoon and just his first basket in the second half, and there's a steal. Look out. Well, let's see with 23 points. Well, this is a point in the game where if you're Seton Hall, you want to close out whether you win or not, getting ready. And the same thing with Pitt is right now, Pitt, what you're doing is you're getting ready for Georgetown. Young draws the foul. Hokuson and Davis were both there. And it's going to go on Davis. He's got five on him. He didn't play that many minutes and he's fouled out. No, he didn't. He, and, 
And what he didn't do was he didn't play defense with his with his feet. That's why he's come. That's why he's fouling out. Checking back in for him is Larry Davis. As Mike Davis afternoon is over. And Bobby Gonzalez wants to get his team back to the bench. Normally it'd be a big for big, but right now with the score and time the way it is, this is where you go with the five small guys and you well, really Mike go Davis across. is still out on the court. He'll be out in a second, I think, <laughs> if, if if what they said was correct, if he fouled out. You got a little time, you got to use up all your clock to get him out, give your team a little rest. Well, Harvey having a great afternoon with 23 points, just four off his career best. And Mike Davis does go to the bench, and he's still playing hard. He's Mr. Harvey. Great anticipation and the finish. And uh, for a guy that's been on the court just about every, in fact, just about every tick, uh, he's doing quite well. Of course, the big injury was the one that brought Lang to the bench during the second half. Only two points in the second half after having a 15 point first half. Young a little more balanced with 15 points in the first half and 10 in the second a career high 25 26. Very important for both teams to close out this game you know on a very positive note two minutes to go. Harvey has really taken over the offense hasn't he? He really has uh, and, and, and rightfully so with, nice drive uh, and with finish out. another with seven points. Another New Jersey product. And that's what Seton Hall does probably best is take it into the lane. Jamie Dixon is not happy because he didn't think he called timeout. They were having trouble getting the ball in. Now Bobby Gonzalez is going to appeal to well, Jim Burr. Yeah, it's not going to do either. It's not going to do him any good. I can tell you that. Bobby's smiling. He's saying, you know what? Uh, I probably can't win this one. And you know what? I'm not going to get a technical foul. I'm going to try and show the referees how the nice guy I am. Smart move, Gunsy. It's 73-65. They have eaten into that what had been a 17-point lead and now have cut it down. Well, I, you know what? I mean, I, I say he can't win this one. He can. I mean, obviously, you still got you still got time. Get a couple more steals than uh, anything can happen. Let's reset the situation here in the final 142. Seton Hall has one timeout left. The Panthers have two. And the Hall has the arrow. Young is fouled. Home run play. Great catch by Young. And Larry Davis. So the Davises have a total of eight fouls between them this afternoon. Well, there you see the long pass. Uh, I, you know, Seton Hall didn't have pressure on the ball, so really shouldn't get beat long, but they did. Young's getting a little tired as well. Yeah, it looks like it looks like he's got to get a little more legs into it, get a little bit more of a bend. If my wife was sitting in the stands, she'd be saying, bend those knees, bend those knees. <laughs> nice hand for Blair, who finishes with another double-double. Nineteen points, fourteen rebounds, and Young misses again, and the Hall just drops the ball out of bounds. Sometime, you know, he got too many guys around the ball. That was one of them. Garcia will be hustled back into the lineup. A little substitution. Uh, and Lang you know, will strategic. go to the bench. And Blair didn't sit for long. He comes right back out there. It's 73 65. Just an eight point game with still over a minute and a half to play. Still enough time for the hall. They got to make a couple of hoops though, and get a couple of stops. It's one of those points where you got to get three stops in a row and score three times in a row. There's the trap when they skip it all the way to the corner. Young thought about three. Ramon will shoot a three. Got it. 14 for Ronald Ramon, and he has made three three pointers in the second half. He has. He's, you know, playing like he used, shooting like he used to. Nutter is Blair and Garcia battle. It goes out of bounds. Touch last by Blair. 
Back to an 11 point edge. The three point shooting has been a big weapon for Pitt in the second half. Incredible. And once again, you know, I mentioned since those guys got hurt, his shooting over, over 50% from the three point line. And Young is tied up and fouled. Of course, Seton Hall would be very happy to, you know, if they have to exchange a two or one for three, but they've got to make baskets. Jamie will never stop coaching. I wouldn't care what the score was, and uh, he's always coaching, always teaching, and always emphasizing defense because he knows that's what wins championships. You would think if he looked at him, his team was down by 20. This is the 10th chance at the free throw line for Sam, and he's missed his last four. Panthers in the second half are 7 of 10 shooting three pointers. Wow, that's a pretty good percentage. They're shooting better from the three than they are from the free throw line. <laughs> that's true. There it is. 27 for Sam. So he can handle that ball. Can he can. He can drive too, can he? <laughs> Trying to save it was Gilbert Brown, but he was on the baseline. So with a minute to go, Seton Hall will have it under its own basket. The Hall will fall to 10 and 6. The Panthers will go to 14 and 2. Unless something crazy happens here, right? How about the steal by Young? Then he's tripped up a couple of times. I want to see this one. I'd like to see the replay on this one. Let's see what happens here. Did you see it? I, I guess I missed it. I thought he fouled him. Yeah, I did too. All right, let's see what happens here. See what Jimmy Burr calls here. We get the steal. I think he said that he stepped out of bounds. Okay. All right. Which is certainly possible. There's Ooh. a steal by Harvey and a basket. Wow. Harvey with 25 points. I'll tell you what, don't you never want to be sleeping on that guy. <laughs> Harvey had nine in the first half. He's got 16 points in the second half. And that's because Lang was not doing much offensively. He was being tended to a couple of times for the hip injury and Sam Young back to the line again. Well you know once again they get a little bit healthier and he can play just a few minutes less. It'll make all the difference in the world. Missed another free throw. You got to make these free throws. So 28 for Sam to lead the way for the Panthers this afternoon. He's had a huge game and uh, Jamie Dixon will have his team huddle around him as the lead is 78 to 67 back to an 11 point difference. You know not that you play for stats but but there aren't many nights as a player you get a chance to get 30. So Sam if you make your free throws you get one of those magical nights you get 30 plus points and you do it really playing as a team player unselfishly and he's a 75 percent free throw shooter he's made only six of 13 this yeah. afternoon he'll he'll look back on that and say boy I blew an incredible opportunity of course he might make another three before it's over and maybe true. get 30 anyhow <laughs> he might go back to the line again the way it's <laughs> going Garcia walking a little gingerly as he checks back into the lineup for the hall they will have the ball with 41 seconds to go there's a six second difference between shot clock and game clock and now the Panthers will try to force them to waste a little time. Well I think tomorrow uh, John both teams will spend the day in the film room in, in, in the whirlpools because they both need to get healthy quick. Nutter for three. He's in double figures now with 10 averaging just about 10 a game. And they have not quit even though there's only 31.9 to go and the shot clock is going to be up. Well Bobby Gonzalez is not going to ever let a team of his quit. I've never seen a, a team of his you know just basically play like the game was was over whether they're up or down. He's going to be in the game and his kids are going to play just like him. Well, look at what's ahead for the hall. They've got South Florida Louisville at home then they go on the road to Providence back against Cincinnati at Rutgers and at Georgetown. They'll play Rutgers Marquette and South Florida twice. Pitt Panthers now waiting a Monday showdown against Georgetown right here at the Peterson Center then a road trip to Cincy and St. John's before Rutgers and Villanova come here. They will play Villanova West Virginia and Cincinnati twice. And that's something to keep an eye on the teams that you do play twice can make a difference. Oh, it makes all the difference in the world. Um, 
you know, and, and, and with the Big East schedule until next year when all 16 teams go to the go to the dance in Madison Square Garden and that is the Big East tournament. Uh, you, you don't want to be 13 through 16. You got to be one through 12. Well we thank our producer John Kettering director Scott Bartlett Gary Guile our stage manager and especially our statistician John Butera who is celebrating another birthday here at this table with us. I'm not sure how old he is now but happy <laughs> birthday John. Happy birthday John. I tell you these 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 front row uh, fans over here are getting quite a lecture. Yeah they are. Uh, you know from the officials. Blair is hammered pushed by Jeremy Hazel who has not scored in the game and was averaging 11 points a game coming in but that slack has been picked up big time by Eugene Harvey. Well crazier things have happened uh, the way Pitt's shooting free throws right now if they don't get both then you could take a situation where maybe you give up one or none and get three and there's still enough time believe it or not if you can make three three you're going to have to make party going to make three threes. I really do know how old John Butera is. I'm just not going to make it public. You're not okay. going to make it public. No. There's the 20th point for Dewan Blair to go along with how many rebounds? 14 at last count. That's pretty good night. It's a great night. Somebody in the lane too soon? I believe so. You sure you want to coach again? <laughs> Look at Bobby Gonzalez. <laughs> he missed his second try as well. You know what? The answer to that is yes. And, 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 and seriously, it's it's not just because it's, it's in your blood, but it's because it's, I mean, let's face it. I mean, where else can you go? And you know, in my case, I don't have to worry about going gray. I mean, I you know, off ball, you know. Nutter for three. And a rebound to Biggs, hands it to Ramon. We're in the final 15 seconds. Ronald pushes it ahead. Here comes Benjamin underneath, and he's fouled. Grabbed before he could get to the basket. That's on Nutter. And they call the intentional, so he'll get two plus the ball, and honest, that's it. That'll be the ball game. Well, the Panthers are going to get back to about what they've been averaging. They were averaging 78.6. Remember, we talked about how low scoring the first half was. The pit has turned that around here in the second half. They have scored 46 points in the second half of this game. And while we were uh, just turned our head, we also had, I believe, a technical foul call. So you're going to get two shots by Benjamin, two free throws on the tech, and then Pittsburgh will get the ball. Benjamin, so. eight of nine at the foul line. Hasn't been there that much. But that's going to change the more minutes he plays. Yeah. No doubt about it, especially with his ability to get into the lanes. It is 14 of 26. 15 of 27. Now Ronald Ramon is going to take over at the free throw line, I believe, for two more. Is the foul on Bobby Gonzalez, or the technical on Bobby Gonzalez? You know what, they must, yeah, the, no, the technical foul was on, I believe, Garcia. One of the players on the okay. floor. So I guess what happened here was I think they shot the two techs first, and then Benjamin stayed. Now the intentionals, huh? Right. Well, Benjamin makes three of four, and he now has a dozen points on the afternoon. The Panthers <laughs> will have the ball back. The checking in for the first time is Gary McGee, who played well. At South Florida. Yes, he did. They're going to empty the bench as Maurice Poland and Tim Fry will also report. This one is pretty much over. Jim Burr is counting the players. He wants to make sure they don't have six. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing gets by him. No, not a thing. He's a, I'll tell you, he's been around forever and uh, he continues to be one of the best, if not the best, in the game. A little runner from the foul line goes. Poland's first two points of the season. And don't the fans love that, huh? There's a block. McGee with a block, and that's the final. 84 to 70 is the final score. The Pitt Panthers really opened it up with a 49 point second half, put it away behind the play of Sam Young and also Dewan Blair, who had a double double.
So congratulations to both of them. Panthers celebrate the victory. They're 14 and two now on the season as they win it this afternoon, 84 to 70. For Mike Jarvis and our entire Big East crew here, I'm John Sanders. For more information on ESPN Plus, log on to ESPN-Plus.com. Preceding has been an exclusive presentation of ESPN Regional Television, the worldwide leader in collegiate sports. So long from Pittsburgh.